Hey guys, uh, recently I bought a new laptop so that I could test out the Arch Linux GUI ISOs on the laptop segment as well. So this is a Asus Vivo Book model, I'm not really sure, I'll show you that in the screen fetch. Uh, but it has Ryzen 3 3250U APU, 4 gigs of RAM, 256 GB NVMe SSD and like most uh, of laptops in the market comes with Windows 10 pre-installed. So if you purchase your laptop like me in the past 4 to 5 years, mine's fresh out of the box, then your laptop will come with a UEFI compatible motherboard and should have Windows 10 formatted in GPT. So this is why I thought I should take this opportunity to show you how to dual boot Windows 10 and Arch Linux uh, on a UEFI BIOS machine formatted in the GPT partitioning scheme. Now please note that this is not going to work on a legacy MBR system, so I'll make a separate video on that too. So please subscribe and uh, let's go ahead and power on our machines. Alright, so once we've powered on a machine, the first thing we should do is, even though we know it, is to confirm whether our computer is booting in UEFI BIOS mode or not. So you can go ahead and search for system uh, information and under BIOS mode, uh, you can see UEFI, so we are confirmed booting in UEFI BIOS mode. Let's also go ahead and check whether our computer uh, is, uh, our disk is formatted in the GPT partitioning scheme or not. And the easiest way to do so is analyze the partitions in our disk. In my case, it's a 256 GB NVMe SSD. So come to the bottom left, right click on the Windows icon and come to disk management. And this should load all the partitions in our disk drive. So what I've already done, this is uh, this computer is fresh out of the box, but I've already gone ahead and created a D drive where uh, supposedly your data is. Uh, for me, this drive is empty, but I've uh, gone ahead and created it uh, nevertheless. So what we need to see uh, to check for the GPT partitioning scheme is this EFI system partition. So in my case, it's 256, uh, 260 megabytes, but that doesn't really matter. The size of the partition doesn't matter, it's, its existence does. So if you have this EFI system partitions, your computer is also uh, formatted in the GPT partitioning scheme. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other partitions quickly. So C drive, we are not going to tamper that because that uh, that's where Windows 10 is installed and has all the files uh, related to Windows. D drive is supposedly where your data is going to be. For me, it's empty because this laptop is new, but my data is also going to be stored there. There's a one gig uh, NTFS recovery partition. And for since this is an ASUS laptop, there is some ASUS recovery partition as well. Now, since we are in the disk manage, uh, management window, uh, let's also go ahead and shrink some space where we'll be installing Arch Linux. So I have some space constraints here. I only have a 256 uh, gig NVMe SSD. So I'm going to uh, go ahead with the minimum recommended, which is 50 gigs of space. So right click, shrink volume. And right now I'm going to type in 50 in megabytes, 50 gigs in megabytes. So that is 51200 and then click on shrink. As you can see, uh, the amount of space left in this D drive is going to be 50 gigs as well because 50 gigs are going to be taken away from it. Uh, this is where we are going to be installing uh, Arch Linux. If you have a bigger disk like a 500 gig, uh, 500 gig uh, hard disk or SSD or a one terabyte hard disk or, uh, or SSD and you plan to use Arch Linux on a more frequent basis, go ahead and allocate more, uh, unallocate more space. But since I have a space constraint here, 50 gig is the recommended minimum. So I'll go ahead with that. Now we can close this. Uh, we need to open our web browser and go to my SourceForge page uh, to which I've link, uh, uh, linked in the description. For those of you who are new to the channel and to the Arch Linux GUI project in general, uh, you can go ahead and watch this video which I've made. Uh, also link will be in the description, but basically uh, I help you install Vanilla Arch Linux uh, with the help of the Calamari's installer. So you can come to files over here and you can download any one of these 10 editions by watching that video. You can also go ahead and watch the June update videos which I'll uh, also link in the description. So you can um, choose between which one uh, is best for you depending on your taste. There's Plasma, Gnome, Cinnamon, XFC in i3. For this video, I'll be going ahead with the flagship edition which is also known as the uh, Plasma themed edition and in the for the legacy video, I'll probably go with the GNOME theme edition. So whatever you like, go ahead and click on that to download. I already have done so by the way uh, over here. So, all right. So now uh, since you have downloaded the ISO, you can go ahead and use Balina Etcher. So you can go ahead and download Etcher and then uh, make a bootable USB. Uh, for UFE systems, please don't use Rufus. It doesn't work. 
So once you have made, uh, you can watch a lot of videos uh, on internet on how to flash your bootable USB. Uh, minimum size recommended is 8 gig. Please also make sure to backup data of the USB drive uh, because that's going to be wiped off. So once you have made your bootable USB, you can ca uh, keep that plugged in and then we are going to power off our machine and then I will meet you at uh, the boot screen. Alright guys, so what you want to do is make sure you have your bootable USB inserted inside your computer and then after that uh, you want to press your power button but before we do that uh, we want to press one of the function keys shown on the screen that matches with your laptop uh, manufacturer or your desktop motherboard manufacturer. Uh, in my case of ASUS this is F12 so let me do that quickly. And each uh, manufacturer has different boot menus to offer. Uh, in the case of ASUS, they have something uh, similar to Windows uh, bootloader, the Metro bootloader. So this is the Metro menu in case of ASUS and then I have to go ahead and uh, select use a device. And then uh, I c you should see something like UEFI and then the brand of your uh, USB device. In my case, the USB device brand is HP. That's why I'm seeing HP. If you have SanDisk, for example, then you'll see UEFI SanDisk. And uh, make sure uh, the first option is selected and press enter. This will take some time to boot uh, Arch Linux from the live USB. Now you are seeing a menu. Over here let me just go ahead and uh, so in this menu uh, you have to make sure the first option is selected it basically says Arch Linux install medium uh, x86-64 UEFI make sure that is highlighted and press enter and then this will uh, boot Arch Linux uh, from the bootable USB all right so once you decide to boot from the bootable usb you will be greeted into the live environment this is the flagship edition also known as the plasma themed edition and all of the 10 isos enable you to all the 10 editions enable you to install or multi boot vanilla arch linux uh, without an internet connection however if you have connected to uh, internet like me uh, this gives you two additional perks and that are basically your time zone gets detected automatically and also your uh, database, your Pac-Man database is synchronized during the installation. So whether you're doing an offline installation or online installation like me, all you have to do is press your Windows key or uh, click on this Arch Linux icon here and then search for install system and this will uh, load the installer. Another recommendation I have for you guys is make sure you have a power connection so that uh, in case of low battery, uh, the installation shouldn't stop. So now the installer is here, we can go ahead and click on next. You can always go ahead and select the language in which you want to do the installation. I'll be doing this in English. Now, as you can see, I have internet connection. Uh, my time zone is detected automatically. If you are doing this offline, you can do, you can go ahead and select your uh, time zone. I'm going to leave this to Kolkata since I'm in India, that's my time zone. We also have to go ahead and set our keyboard layout. I don't use the Devanagari keyboard. I use the English United States keyboard. So I'm going to select that click on next and we see four uh, options here the top three are basically redundant because uh, we don't want to erase disk and we don't want to erase any uh, replace any partition the first uh, option seems feasible but the only problem with this option is that uh, the installer will create the home directory the home partition inside the root partition and I'll probably make another video why we don't want to do that why it's uh, a good practice to keep the home partition uh, outside the root partition and that's why we're going to click on manual partitioning. I would also like to draw your attention to this graph here which we are going to see in the next page as well. Uh, this shows us all the partitions that are currently present in our disk. Uh, you can see that we are uh, on a UEFI motherboard and we are going to be partitioning uh, the, we are going to do the uh, existing partitioning in the GPD partitioning scheme and my SSD over here. So let's go ahead and click on next. Uh, so one thing I want to tell you here is that you can see that my uh, partition here, uh, the, the name of my disk here is slash dev slash nvme0n1. That's because I have an NVMe SSD installed on this laptop. If you have a hard disk or a SATA SSD, then the name of your drive is going to be slash dev slash sda or slash dev slash sdb if they are two drives and uh, accordingly the partitions in these drives are going to be SDA1, SDA2, SDA3 
and if you have a second disk SDB1, SDB2, SDB3, if you are on NVMe SSD like me, then you should see something like NVMe0, uh, N1, uh, it's not going to be exactly the same, but you should see something like NVMe, all right? So let's go ahead and discuss uh, the existing partitions on the disk right now, and then go ahead and make our own partitions where Arch Linux is going to be installed. So the first partition is the Windows Boot Manager. It contains the Windows Boot Loader that enables Windows to boot. This is the this is the place where we want to install also the Arch Linux bootloader, which is Grub. So we are going to use this partition. So we are going to click on Edit. We're not going to change the size. Uh, whatever size is there, we are going to keep it. In my case, it's 260 megabytes. What we are going to do is set the mount point to slash boot slash EFI. The flag is set to boot, so that's all right, and we can click on OK. Right now, so uh, what will happen after this installation? Every time you boot, Grub will boot up, and since uh, Arch Linux uh, can, uh, right now in this installer, there's an application called OS Prober that is going to detect any other operating system. In this case, we are dual booting with Windows, but any other Linux distribution is there on the operating system. You can choose which one you want to boot into. So in our case, since we are dual booting Windows 10 and Arch Linux, you will get an option to choose in which operating system you want to boot into, all right? So that's about this uh, partition. Second partition, which is uh, P2, is a 16 gig uh, partition just for, uh, it, it's uh, unknown and useless, so we are not going to tamper it, tamper it. The third partition is our Windows C drive. How did I recognize that? Just by looking at the size of the partition, all right? So since Windows is there, we're not going to touch that. Partition four is our D drive. It was originally 100 gigs, but then we uh, shrinked it and then we unallocated 50 gigs from there from there and that's why 50 gigs is left i again looked at the size and i recognized the partition the 50 gig free space we unallocated from the d drive is here and this is where uh, this is what we are going to be using to uh, install uh, arch linux the rest of the ntfs partitions are ntfs and fat32 partitions are the windows recovery partition this one is the asus one which uh, you saw in the disk management of windows so let's go ahead and create the root uh, home and the swap partition swap because i have i'm little less i'm little less on ram here i have only 4 gigs of ram installed so let's go ahead and first create the root partition that's mandatory and also important because that's where that's the arch linux uh, files that's going to contain the arch linux file system so since i've constrained i only have 50 gigs i'll uh, allocate like 20 gigs for uh, the root partition, let's go ahead and type in 20480, that is uh, 20 into 1024, my math is right, I think so, it is right, of course, <laughs> and you can go ahead and uh, keep the file system txt4, encryption is always an option in all the additions, but I'm not going to do that right now, and we are going to uh, select the mount point to root, which is just a slash, and in the flags we are going to tick on root, click on OK, and we have a 20 gig ext4 partition, the red one, which has come up on this graph. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and quickly create the swap partition. I have four gigs of RAM, so I'm going to create a four gig swap partition, which is 4096, four into 1024. And the file system is going to be Linux swap. I'm also going to move this to the end of this space uh, over here. So you can see the free spaces here in between the root and the swap partition. I have exactly 26 gigs of space left. So because 50, uh, is 20 plus 26 plus 4, uh, 20 for root, 4 for swap, so the remaining 26 uh, is going to be used as the home partition, which is, uh, you can come to mount point as home, select, uh, set the mount point as home, no flags here, just click on OK. So there it is, we have set up all the partitions, let's go ahead and quickly re-revise, or revise, we haven't revised, right? So we are going to be uh, modifying this uh, first partition, which is P1, uh, and uh, installing Grub there so that uh, Grub can detect both Windows and Arch Linux. We are also going to be installing Arch Linux on the root partition and then we are going to be installing our home partition here that will contain all our home partition is like the D drive so that will contain all the files, folders and everything personal that's yours and not of the system. And then swap partition because this is optional because I have very little RAM over here, uh, 4 gigs only so uh, creating swap acts basically like a virtual memory so whenever you run out of physical installed memory you can depend on swap so i hope i'm pretty clear uh, with the partitioning if you have any doubts you can always ask me uh, in the comment section let's go ahead and click on next 
type in your credentials i'm going to name my user demon killer uh, i'm going to probably type in test and you can name write okay uh, write it write the name of the computer you want i'm writing a test set a very hard password that you can remember always uh, this is auto login i'm not going to auto login i want the computer to ask me the password that i've set in over here and i'm going to click on uh, i'm going to use the same password for the administrator account so click on that click on next and you can go ahead uh, this is going to give the summary i think i've been clear enough with the partitioning so we are just going to go ahead and click on install system this is going to take some time you can go ahead and sit back and relax let the installer do its work and i'll be back when this is done All right guys so as you can see the installation has been done all you have to do is click on restart now and then click on done Okay guys so we are done uh, installing Arch Linux and dual booting it with Windows 10 let's quickly go ahead and take a look at how uh, the result what the result is so i'm going to remove my USB device at this time as you can see we now have an option to boot into either of the operating systems use your arrow keys to select which operating system to boot into and the one which is highlighted in blue will boot if you like this video please do subscribe to this channel and this is the place where you'll get updates on the arch linux gui project thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a nice day